is remembered to have been a very strict chairman uh, in terms of on issues to do with agriculture, cleanliness, cleaning roads, clearing wells, and things like that. And some people in Movende remember him as one uh, leader who would even cane or even imprison those that were big-headed when it came uh, to issues like cleanliness and uh, clearing wells and agriculture and development, economics, things like that. Yes, so he served as the S5 of Bobende and also a director of stores in the Uganda People's Defense Forces. While at the rank of brigadier on the 31st of January 2005, Kasiria Gwango was retired from the army by the UPDF officials and, however, after three months he asked to be reinstated. The UPDF leadership agreed to his plea and he was allowed uh, to be reinstated as a soldier in the UPDF and he served not until his contract. He was reinstated on a contractual basis and when the contract uh, elapsed, that was in 2018, he was um, promoted to the rank of Major General and retired uh, gracefully. Reported of his sickness started coming in around January, February, but he has been uh, under treatment here at uh, the Nakasero Hospital where he breathed his last uh, this early morning and the news started coming through that Kasiria Gwanga, the Major General, has breathed his last. Like I mentioned in uh, the profile, like I, uh, I mentioned in the breath, uh, in the brief, yeah, as you can see, uh, the administration of Nakasero Hospital has denied access to everyone including us journalists we are broadcasting to you live from outside the guest we have been denied access to the inside of the hospital and you can see uh, one of uh, uh, somebody here who has been denied access as well just like the rest of us who came uh, to get to know what is happening here and uh, what is to happen next but as you can see uh, family and friends are flocking in to ensure that all uh, is moving on well to prepare for his burial and send off and things like that Yes, Kasiri Gwanga has been known as a serious no-nonsense general on issues that he believed in. A few years ago, not more than two years ago, he's remembered in an incident where he burned a tractor of somebody who was trying to evade his land. Yes, on an issue where he didn't believe in something, he would take action right away. He found this land trying to grade, a tractor trying to grade his land, he shot at it, and the tractor got burned. They still, uh, the issues are still on. From there, he still remembered uh, for having shot some trucks that were felling trees uh, in some areas of Mubende, an issue he didn't totally agree with because he thought the problems of environmental problems that are in Mubende were due to tree cutting and deforestation in that area. So he was against whoever was uh, facilitating the cutting of trees in that area, so he shot at trucks <laughs> that were felling trees uh, from Mubende. Again, He's remembered in an incident where somebody was trying to have a disagreement with his children around much India. When he went there, <laughs> he shot at the tires of this car owned by the person, and I remember that was one of the musicians in this town, Catherine Guzasera, who had an issue with his children, with his children. Kasiri Gwanga sorted the matter that way. Yes, he is remembered as a notorious, no-nonsense general, although in many cases he has been a very social man, a very good advisor on issues especially to do with agriculture he so much loved growing of passion fruit because he thought they were so so lucrative he believed in coffee growing he believed in uh, uh, vegetation he believed in good environment and all of this he performed and he also preached whenever he got an opportunity to be on any media platform he would preach agriculture he would preach coffee growing he would preach uh, passion fruit growing he would preach rearing of goats pigs cows and things like that and at his heart Kasiri Gwanga always hurt was hurting that in the central region the levels of agriculture were not at that peak like he thought because he thought the days of his childhood Buganda was a hub of agriculture and he thought people were really giving in their all to ensure that Buganda was developing he was so disappointed uh, with the people of today whom he thought were not taking agriculture that serious and whenever he got an opportunity to speak anywhere on any platform uh, preaching agriculture was his thing and he was known for that today there's no more Kasiri Gwanga as he goes uh, to meet the Lord and we just pray that he rests in eternal peace. We'll give, keep giving you uh, more updates on the programs for his send-off.
Uh, we have had uh, a number of UPDF generals coming in here. Having been a senior in the army, of course, his colleagues have to take over and to ensure that he takes, he is given uh, a treatment that he deserves as a senior general, a commander for that. Like you've heard in the, the profile that I've given you, he commanded the 120 millimeter artillery unit of the Uganda People's Defense Forces. That is after 1986 when they had just come in. Yes. So the Uganda People's Defense Forces have lost a senior army officer. Uh, the Anglican Church has lost a big son. Mitiana region, that is Greater Mitiana, Mubende, Mitiana, uh, in Buganda we call it the single county. They have lost a serious pillar, a son. And um, a number of categories of units of society have lost somebody, but Uganda in general has lost a gallant son <coughs> who did not only fought for peace, but he also ensured that through preaching economic development, uh, income, household incomes, through the preaching of agriculture and things like that, coffee growing and coffee, uh, whatever, the Kassiri Gwanga has been a pillar in the promotion of agriculture and things like that. So we'll keep you posted on whatever will ha be happening here at Nakasero Hospital. We'll go to his home, we'll give you the vigil and whatever program that government and all the authorities will come in with to ensure his good send-off will be updating you. My name is Michael Jordan Lukoma. I'm here with Mugoya Daniel and Emon Ngabo to give you uh, whatever that will be happening here. We expect to see the body all probably being taken out or to a funeral home or something like that. We are still camping here at Nakasero Hospital. Even when the administration has denied us access inside, we'll keep around uh, to give you the details of the whole, uh, of whatever will develop here. Thank you so much for watching. Back to studio. Well, thank you so much, Michael Jordan Lukomwa, just right there at Nakasero Hospital, uh, together with our colleagues, um, uh, Oga Mugoya and Emon Ngabo, giving us, of course, that update of... Um, what is happening at Nakasero Hospital. Now, we all now know, it, it's confirmed that uh, General uh, Waswa Kasiri Gwanga is no more. We'll just remember and talk about him. And uh, what an irony that he dies on this day, um, on uh, Heroes Day 2020. Now, amidst the pandemic of COVID-19, and uh, yet again, when we are so supposed to uh, celebrate many or uh, much of these events uh, scientifically. Now, uh, Michael Jordan Lukomwa has uh, just given us an insight there of uh, who this man Kasiri Gwanga was. We remember very well that he joined the forces in 1972, and uh, he served there uh, for, for all uh, his, uh, his time. Um, I took a break, uh, went to Amovende, uh, where he also served as a LC5 chairperson, uh, very well remembered as uh, the governor of uh, Movende. Until, um, uh, well, then when he came back to um, uh, the main uh, fold of the force to serve uh, there, um, uh, went through uh, different ranks up to the rank of uh, a two-star general. Uh, that's a major general uh, where he died. Now, remember the rumors of uh, Kasiri Gwanga's sickness or illness started um, sometime in February this year uh, when um, uh, the rumors were skewed to actually mean or say that uh, he was arrested for his uh, controversial discussions or talks, um, uh, but he was taken to Mbia Military Hospital for treatment thereabout, and um, um, he's battled with that illness until uh, this uh, day when he finally goes to uh, live and to be uh, with the Lord. Waswa Kasiri Gwanga will be remembered for uh, lots of controversies and a number of things, but above all, is uh, he's served this country. Um, he's been a military man. He's, uh, his whole life has been uh, in the forces. He's served in the forces all through and all through. Now, Kasiri Gwanga has got a very rich history of uh, how he even joined or how he even comes into uh, the National Resistance Movement, um, how he joins. Now, remember in 1972, at that time, Idi Amin Dada, uh, Field Marshal President uh, Idi Amin Dada was the president of Uganda. He just um, came to power. And of course, that's the time um, when Kasiri Gwanga joined as an officer or as a man of uh, the Uganda Army. Um, he served the army, he served in, um, um, he served in uh, Idi Amin's government and the subsequent governments until uh, this time round when he meets his death as a two-star uh, general at the age of uh, 68. Now, Kasiri um, starts uh, on the 9th of uh, June in, the two, um, in 1981. Now, this was only 123 days um, uh, when the NRM had lodged or started their uh, guerrilla war, uh, that protracted war that ended um, on the 26th of January 19. 
86. Now, Kasiria Gwanga was um, one of the men there who were actually fighting along side uh, the government forces uh, to see how to actually now liberate Uganda. Uh, that was uh, riddled in a number of problems at the time when uh, human life was not dignified at all. Now, Kasiria Gwanga, when this government came into power, has been uh, one of the people there. Very controversial. He's been an advisor of the president on security issues, on security affairs, on Boganda issues, and a number of things. And um, we'll remember him for all the things uh, that he's done. Apart from being a soldier, um, uh, and actually used to refer to himself as a soldier's soldier. That, that's why he just called himself. He used to call himself a soldier's soldier. Now remember that Kasiri Gwanga is one of the very few uh, UPDF officers who have attended the most lucrative uh, military academy in the world. That's um, uh, the Leavenworth, uh, the, the Port Leavenworth uh, University in the U.S. or Military Academy in the U.S. Um, Kasiri Gwanga is, is one of those men. Uh, when President Museveni um, uh, um, Actually, one of the reasons why President Museveni also uh, uh, came out to uh, fight uh, the HIV pandemic or the HIV epidemic, uh, Kasiri Gwanga is one of the men who were actually uh, taken to Chuba uh, during the times of Fidel Castro, and all of them had to go mandatory uh, testing uh, for HIV AIDS. Uh, when most office officers of uh, the UPDF at that time refused, of not the UPDF but the NRA, uh, most officers of uh, the NRA at the time um, feared to go uh, through the mandatory uh, HIV tests. Kasiri Gwanga was one of those who said, "I'll dare uh, you and uh, do the test now." Kasiri Gwanga has been a man of uh, his own stature. I uh, will not have another Kasiri Gwanga. He's the only Kasiri Gwanga that we've had. We'll remember him for uh, the service friend of this country of Uganda, especially from 1972 when he decided to put on uniform and uh, to liberate or to serve this country, Uganda, patriotically as he's done. Now, um, uh, uh, he covers a uh, part and much of uh, today, but we also need to remember that um, on this uh, day, um, uh, on this day, we also remember uh, Kano um, Ibrahim, a brigade member of parliament from uh, Rua municipality. It was also gone down just yesterday. N now, this period reminds us a number of things. Uh, we remember that in 1998, um, yesterday, 8th of June, is uh, when uh, the ADF rebels uh, torched uh, the students in Chichuamba Technical Institute. Uh, that was yesterday uh, in 1998. Now, yesterday in 2018, Ibrahim Abriga was also gone down. And we remember now that um, on this day today, uh, we also now lose uh, General Kasiri Gwanga. Now, that uh, is for uh, this particular period. And we also remember that um, um, we started celebrating this day, Heroes Day, in 1990. And now, when we talk about 1998, when uh, we had that Chichuamba infant know the Chichuamba massacre which was also very deplorable and we remember it in our history um, uh, the masterminds of that uh, 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 that uh, particular uh, uh, massacre there is uh, now the man Jamir Mukuru who is actually in prisons and uh, in Rwanda just a couple of hours ago um, uh, in prisons where he was he was also asking for bail and uh, because it's a rule of law we also wait to see and to hear what uh, that happens thereafter you also remember that uh, the late uh, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote, a former Prime Minister and also former President of Uganda, uh, died on the 10th of um, October in 2005. Now, um, so many people had actually wished that uh, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote would have died on the 9th of October, uh, but of course because uh, none of us has a um, right of a life. Uh, we uh, couldn't choose that uh, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote dies on the same day. But of course, um, uh, the talk there that was there was uh, the man who uh, delivered Uganda to independence in 1962 on the 9th of October actually died on the 10th of October 2005. But of course, he was not um, in Uganda at the time and um, wherever he died from in uh, South Africa. Now, that's um, uh, part of what uh, continues to happen. And um, like I said, uh, God's ways are not our ways. Now, that's about Kasiri Gwanga. Michael Jordan Nukomwa in Nakasero Hospital, where they are, they will get the details, uh, give us and feed us with the information, and let us know um, how this is going to be done. Remember, uh, the celebration is going to be done scientifically. Um, how it will be done is another thing now that we leave to the organizers. Now, uh, that is uh, um, at the discretion of the Uganda People's Defense Forces. Uh, the forces there will let us know, uh, will teach us, and of course will uh, um, enable us to understand how it's uh, going to be uh, done or celebrated. Now, barrier arrangements and when he'll be buried is uh, something that we cannot delve into. 
right now except to and now just uh, bereave together with the family uh, to allow them accept our condolences to pray with them and uh, to uh, put and to usher them into the hands of God uh, to console them and to be with them as we can only say uh, for Kasiria Gwanga uh, may his soul rest in eternal peace may he go and uh, rest peacefully with uh, his ancestors until when we all meet in eternity uh, just like um, uh, the prophet of old David said my son has gone to be with the Lord I cannot return uh, he cannot return to me it's me who shall go to him now the same way um, uh, Kasiria Gwanga cannot return to Uganda or to Ugandans it's we now who shall go to uh, where he's actually gone now back to Heroes Day uh, today Heroes Day is um, the day that we're celebrating, going to be very scientific. And um, amazingly, um, the day had not been chosen for where the celebrations would be. Now, this day is celebrations because they are scientific. We're going to see another event, just like we saw at the event that happened on the 1st of um, uh, May, uh, Labor Day celebrations that were held in State House. This year's only public event on National Public Holiday that we've uh, managed to host as a country is uh, the public holiday that we had in Mbale. And that was uh, the International Women's Day celebrations. Uh, it, it, it was only that. Now, on the 8th of um, March and uh, on, the 20, on the 18th, 10 days later, um, we now realize that, yes, a coronavirus was actually real and it was uh, coming towards us, um, storming towards us, even when we had no a case at the time. But we noticed, yes, uh, it was a pandemic that was spreading uh, globally and everywhere. And we knew that uh, by whichever means it would still get Uganda and still it crept into Uganda uh, from, uh, um, from the Middle East uh, to be specific in UAE. That's where it came from. I uh, spread all over and of course from all the other sources and we are with it today. As we speak, 646 uh, cases uh, confirmed with 102 uh, recoveries, which is also another thing that we need to appreciate and thank God for. Now when we talk and remember our heroes on this uh, day, we also need now to uh, recognize our health workers who have been uh, at the forefront uh, there to see and to safeguard us uh, to do whatever they've done uh, to um, enable us and to make sure that uh, Ugandans live, Ugandans survive, Ugandans uh, do not die of this thing which has actually killed scores of people across uh, the globe. So many people have died in the US, in, in, in Europe, in Asia, South America and everywhere. We thank God and uh, we are still uh, very thankful to the Almighty God that um, even with 600 cases, uh, with 102 recoveries, we've not had any uh, death uh, yet in Uganda. We pray against any death. We do not wish for any death and we pray that um, we will um, not um, accept or allow any death. Not because of our powers, not because of our might, but because of the God that we trust in, the God that we pray, the God that we submit this country to, and the God uh, for whom we live the affairs of this country. For scriptures are very clear. They say that blessed is the nation whose Lord is God. And because Uganda is for God and my country, we know that this country is God's country, and uh, this our country will continue to be protected uh, by that same God who uh, keeps us, who guides us, who guards against us, who protects us, and who does um, all things uh, for us. Now, as you can see, uh, just right there, uh, the uh, uh, the, the band are uh, just ready uh, to receive the president um, uh, who, uh, when he steps over and comes on, I am just also very sure that uh, the president has received the bad news of uh, one of his uh, own men, uh, General Kassiri Gwanga. And I can just imagine that um, his mood could have uh, changed from what it was before the news of Kassiri Gwanga uh, to now uh, when the news has been broken to him that um, his uh, general, um, Kassiri Gwanga, is no more. He's uh, gone uh, to be with the Lord. Remember that um, uh, the fortunate bit about the death of Kassiri Gwanga is uh, he's not died of an accident. Um, uh, he's not died of recklessness. He's not died of, uh, he's not been assassinated. He's not, he's not been shot dead. He's not died in a, a, a domestic brawl. He's not died in a bar fighting or doing all the things. He's died of natural causes. And so um, that, that, that's one thing that uh, I, I am very sure that the family must have uh, felt the contentment 
of uh, having an opportunity uh, to treat their own relative uh, to uh, maybe even be with him at that last moment uh, to say bye to them and to hear those uh, last words or the last confessions uh, that he possibly uh, may have had an opportunity uh, to speak out or to say anything uh, for the family. It's not the same as uh, just being told that uh, um, your family member, your colleague has actually died uh, like uh, we saw Abiriga being shot dead when he was going for um, his um, Itaraway prayers uh, during that uh, holy month of uh, uh, Ramadan. And uh, many, um, uh, of, of course, uh, and, and much more of uh, what is uh, happening there. Now, um, this particular day, like I said, um, uh, has its history uh, from a man called uh, Edidian Muchi, Viruta Maguzi, and nine others uh, who sacrificed when they were uh, um, arrested by uh, the UNLA. Uh, forces um, asked to reveal the whereabouts of uh, Yoweri Museveni and uh, his NRA fighting men. Um, had they uh, succumbed to the pressures of the UNLA and uh, revealed um, uh, the whereabouts of Yoweri Museveni and his men, then uh, that would actually have been at uh, the end of Museveni and uh, his strugglists. And uh, maybe this day wouldn't be here. Or it would be here, of course, definitely, but in a different shape, uh, with different players, different characters. And uh, that's why uh, we need to uh, remember them. I just do not know what runs in the head of uh, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the president of Uganda. Today, when he remembers his friend, Edidian Muchibi Rutamaguzi, I do not know what runs in the heads of uh, these uh, fighting forces or these fighting uh, men um, uh, who actually knew that uh, their lives were hanging by the thread um, um, uh, at just the confession or the refusal to confess by Muchibi Rutamaguzi. Uh, what about if Muchibi Rutamaguzi had actually confessed uh, that uh, this is where the men were? What would have been uh, that? So, so this is the day that we're celebrating today. Now, this day was first celebrated in 1990, and this, to be precise, is uh, 30 years ago uh, when we started celebrating this day. It was gazetted, and uh, of course, um, by an act of parliament, um, made an official uh, public national holiday um, uh, in the 2001 um, Act. Um, when Parliament passed an act in 2001, that this day will be a National um, Heroes Day. That we celebrate today. Now, National Heroes Day, remembering all the people, it was broadened uh, to move from only the fighters um, in the Luero, uh, Bush War, uh, but all the other Ugandans who have also contributed. We have heroes and heroines whose contributions has been above a self above a self and uh, they focus to the nation and done a number of things uh, that we need to uh, recognize and remember them for. Now, one thing that we remember about such days is uh, the glamour that comes with it, the tradition and the organization that comes with it is that uh, this day, uh, to be specific, is normally celebrated or organized in uh, places where the fighting was because that's why it makes much more meaning. Uh, this day is celebrated in areas um, who have a historical contribution uh, to uh, the 1981-86 Bush war as uh, we uh, remember because uh, in many of the places where this particular day is actually celebrated uh, there are uh, several mass graves. Uh, the are uh, mass graves where civilians um, uh, civilians who participated in the war uh, were killed and buried and uh, to remember them, the monuments that have been built um, in those particular areas. In two, uh, 2018 you remember when you went to Birembo and uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Ethiopia, B. Ahmed uh, visited and that was one of his um, uh, uh, made and set visits as a uh, uh, Prime Minister of Ethiopia. He came to Uganda and of course um, uh, he uh, was in Ibirembo where that um, uh, the, the wreath was right to uh, the mass grave in Ibirembo for uh, the fighters who were there. And to be specific, at that particular place in Ibirembo where there is that um, a particular mass grave, um, we also told the history of that place that um, um, uh, President Museveni was actually around that same uh, place. Uh, I think preparing lunch or uh, and we told the, the meal that day was I think cassava uh, and, and, and the shooters from the hills of uh, if you've been to uh, Virembo to uh, Kasambia, I think it's called Kasambia Virembo in Bukomero, uh, not Bukomero Virembo, in, it's actually Virembo in, in that particular uh, part of um, uh, Uganda in Kakumiro um, in, in Kakumiro, um, uh, they say uh, they were actually uh, shelled and um, they, they only survived by whiskers 
uh, to uh, not to die on that particular day. So, so there are lots of memories on this particular day. Now, just recently, uh, last year, we saw uh, this day was celebrated in Kasanje, where they saw, saw another mass grave. Now, Kasanje, uh, being that cradle or that peninsula uh, that connects um, uh, Wakiso, uh, Entebbe, to Mpiji, and a number of places, uh, you, you, um, uh, its history um, uh, is also uh, uh, another very good history. That many of the fighting forces at that time, uh, the UFM, uh, the uh, UFM, uh, FEDEMU, and, and, and other fighting forces, uh, I think even the NRA, um, also many of them actually camped in those particular areas uh, to see because it was actually easier uh, for that particular area uh, to cross to uh, the Lake, um, Lake Victoria and possibly cross. And we actually know that uh, it was at that particular place there where President Museveni actually crossed uh, to uh, cross by water to go to uh, Nairobi and I think eventually to uh, Tanzania. Then um, uh, he found his way of how to escape and run away from uh, uh, the forces that were uh, looking for him. So, so we, we'll, uh, uh, Heroes Day is celebrated in many of the places where uh, some of uh, those historical uh, 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 sites are uh, where it, it's got that history uh, to um, uh, the contribution of uh, the Liberation War. Now, the other thing that we also experience on this day is that the medals that are normally awarded to are the different individuals uh, whose contribution is, them, is eminent uh, to liberating uh, Uganda. Now, this is what will continue to miss out uh, during these um, uh, uh, scientific um, uh, celebrations that we mark. Uh, for example, this year's uh, 2020 um, uh, Heroes Day uh, celebrations. One of the things that, of course, we will miss out on is the scientific the scientific, um, I beg your pardon, the scientific, but um, the, the word of uh, medals uh, that would see uh, the different speeches, of course, uh, from the different players and the memories that people um, have and have about uh, these uh, particular days or these uh, particular events. And so uh, that's uh, what we celebrate on this particular day when we talk about uh, My Heroes Day. Uh, it's, uh, celebrating uh, men and women, uh, the heroes and heroines, um, uh, whose uh, selfless contribution um, uh, uh, at the national level that uh, supersedes, goes above uh, self, is what we are experiencing. And of course, um, when you look at that there, is um, everybody seems to be set, waiting for uh, the president of Uganda to also uh, now come and speak uh, to uh, the nation. Uh, it's going to be celebrated scientifically, and um, while the president is going to uh, be there, or if rather means is that uh, you have nothing to worry about. Our responsibility, our national mandate, our duty is actually to deliver the president to you uh, from uh, wherever he will be uh, for you to be part of our Heroes Day today. But like we said, um, our Heroes Day today is also um, now. Uh, we, we, we will celebrate it as we remember uh, General Waswakasiri Gwanga who has also just died uh, today on uh, Heroes Day. It will be very easy for everybody and many of us to remember uh, General Kasire Gwanga's day of death because it has happened on a day that we celebrate heroes. And um, uh, to many people, they thought uh, this was a hoax when uh, the news started flying by and around on uh, social media platforms saying that uh, uh, General Kasire Gwanga has died and gone to be with the Lord. Many people thought maybe it is um, just a hoax of uh, the day. But um, our teams, uh, of course, they are in hospital. Jordan Lokomwa and, and the others have confirmed to us. And, of course, now uh, following through with what is happening, uh, Newsroom is preparing. And will get us, uh, to, uh, they will get us uh, the details of um, uh, this day. And, of course, what happens after uh, for um, General Waswa. Uh, Kasirie Gwanga. We'll take a break and um, as uh, we also again prepare to uh, bring you uh, the president of Uganda who we guess um, uh, is about to speak uh, to the nation uh, today on uh, this uh, Heroes Day. Now remember that uh, the celebrations are going to be done like that. There will be speeches of course uh, from the different stakeholders as uh, is normally the norm and as is uh, the custom of celebrating this particular day. My name is Jagger and I'm going to take a break as we uh, still prepare for the president uh, still to come through to us here on uh, UBC TV. Just stay tuned and uh, do not go away as uh, we wait for the president to speak to us.